Hi, welcome to Comic Talk. I'm Josh. And I just a little bit hungover today. Just a little bit. We'll, we'll get through it. Okay. Uh, this is a TV tie-in episode. This is for the preacher, or is it just preacher? Preacher. Preacher. Uh, we're going to talk about book one: Garth Ennis and Steve Dillon. Kapow! Uh, this is a TV tie-in, so we're really talking here about the show, AMC, AMC. right? AMC show Preacher, and there's, I mean, obviously, if you're going to read a comic for the show Preacher, you're going to read Preacher. Okay. Yeah. Right. By the way, at the beginning of the show, it does that thing where it's like based on the graphic novel, whatever, yeah. whatever. It's not a fucking graphic it's, novel. It's not. Like, there's, there's not. This is, this is a trade. Yeah. It's a comic book. That yeah. Is now collected into a trade. It's, it's not a graphic novel. Yeah. Uh, so this is Garth Ennis, Steve Dillon, mm-hmm. uh, also coloring by Matt Hollingsworth or Hollingworth or. One of the two. One of the two. Yeah. Uh, which he's done a lot of coloring that we've really liked. He did Witches. Uh, he did something with Arrow, I think, at some point. Green Arrow. Yeah. Uh, some other things. Like, just in general, it tends to be when Hollingsworth is doing the coloring. We like it. Yeah. Yeah, he's got good taste <clears throat> in people to work with, I guess. Yeah. Um, also, old school Vertigo. Shout out. It's Garth Ennis. Uh, Garth Ennis is known for pretty violent, aggressive kind of writing. Uh tends to be pretty what you could call gritty and Mm -hmm. not sound like an asshole because it's kind of his thing is actually gritty there's a lot of blood and cursing you know just really ample chances to be offended or off put um in several different ways throughout this which is which is kind of the charm of it Mm -hmm. you know it just Makes no attempt to give a fuck right, about right. most things. And it's also Steve Dillon who, I think this is probably his best work. So here's the thing. This comic is obviously, the, like the plot line is relatively similar in vague sort of ways. Enough that giving the basic synopsis of this comic will probably spoil the show. Yeah, it'll probably be like a big reveal in the show. Even though it's not a big reveal in the comic. Like in the comic, it's like the basic plot line is given to you immediately almost. Mm -hmm. Like the first... Pick up the pieces like, you know, maybe like halfway through or something like that. At at furthest. Like it gives it to you pretty fast. It's not a mystery. it's more of a character drama, which is funny because the show is very much character drama. We've both watched the first two episodes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's very much a character drama, but this does it in more of a comic book form where it's okay just right off the bat to say, here's a bunch of crazy shit that's going on. Mm-hmm. It's nuts. You know, it's a huge, insane concept. For a comic book reader, that's generally just okay. Like, yeah, it's fine. You just take it and go cool, that's the weird shit that's happening now, let's get to the character drama Mm -hmm. that that causes. But with the TV show, they have to do it generally the other way around just because the TV audiences aren't as willing to just buy into a crazy concept off the the front, right? Right, so you present them with all the easily digestible shit and then sprinkle in the... The weirdness and and you build it. Fantasticalism. Right, you build the fantastical over Mm -hmm. the course of a season. So I think what we'll do here is let's talk a little bit about what there is to like for the people who are watching the show who are thinking about whether or not they want to read this comic. Sure. And then we'll come back and spoil and we'll let you know before we do that so we can talk about it for the people who've already done both and just want to know what we think of it. Right. I mean, I'm not just going to be a dick and be like, oh, the book is better or whatever. I mean, we've only had like a few episodes of the TV show and like it's hard to objectively argue mediums like that anyway without being a total dick. Uh, But the characterizations in here, I feel, are a lot more stark and vivid than than you get in the TV show, which given, I mean, I read this whole trade, you know, which took longer than two hours, which is the total time I've invested into the TV show. But... Some of the characters are just a lot more hateable, mm-hmm. I think, which really goes a long way. Like, uh, the sheriff of the town, like, you right off the bat think is, like, a huge piece of shit, and, like, that never lets up, you know? And um, this far in the show, he's, like, sort of, like, a shadowy kind of mystery character that you don't mm-hmm. 
feel any sort of way about. Cassidy is just awesome in this. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just love every scene that Cassidy's in in this. And he he has a very similar vibe, I would say, in the show, but it's not it's not quite the same. I know further along in the comic, there's this whole thing with his eyes that a lot of people who have read all of this and then saw the show were like pissed off that in like the the trailer for the for the show you immediately saw his eyes. But I don't know, what'd you pick up on? I uh, I think in terms of of the characters themselves and how they relate, I think it's really they've done a good job in the show of capturing the essence of the characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, so for a show watcher, one of the interesting things I think is that uh, reading this, you get a slightly different perspective on them, but it's almost a different story entirely with the same characters. It's right. like an alternate like universe, an else world an Elseworld story. Yeah, of these same characters. Like, well, what if uh, you know? Just we immediately went to the. He has the word of God. He knows what it's about. He knows what's going on. Uh, because that's the main difference. He has a lot more information about his predicament in the comic right off the bat. Mm-hmm. And so he just takes off. He's like, okay, well, I'm going to go you know, get some shit done. Whereas in this, uh, or on the show, he's spent a lot of time just, oh, what's, what's my place in the world? And yeah. It's, yeah. it's more really lethargic. Discovering his, his ability. So, so yeah. I think this does, or the show does a good enough job of, of capturing the characters that for somebody who likes the characters and just wants more, I think this is a great way to get it. Cause you just jump right in. I don't feel like the characters are so different that it's uh, jarring to go from one to the other. It almost just mm-hmm. feels like... Uh, what's the female lead? The f- you, that's the big difference. Tulip. Tulip, yeah. Tulip is way the fuck different. Right. Um, I would say everybody else is like relatively spot on, like, you know, within like a... 80% or so, mm-hmm. but Tulip is like so, so much different in the show than she is in here. Right. Well, yeah, the interesting thing is I feel like the show gives us more information about certain things than we get in the comic. The more grounded, action-y stuff we get more of in the show and the more high concept we get in the comic, right? Yeah. So my guess is what we see in the show. I've only read, read the first trade of this so far. We're both fresh to this, right? Sure. So my guess is the tulip we get in the show is probably the tulip that used to exist or that will exist in the Later. future, probably. Mm-hmm. Like tulip will probably grow to be the character we see in the show in the comic. But it's almost like a prequel for tulip in a weird way. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. I think she's set up in the show to be more of, like, just a foil for Jesse, mm-hmm. you know, and um, really the the person that Jesse wants to be, you know, I mean, almost sort of a, like an antagonist in a weird way, but not an antagonist at the same time, like a spiritual antagonist. Mm-hmm. Well, we yeah. have the, the girl from the church that plays the organ that kind of runs everything for him in the show. She's not in the comic. No. So I think they took some of Tulip and put her into that character, and they took another aspect of Tulip that we probably see later and, and just, just made that up and, yeah. Tulip. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it makes sense for the show, and I like that they're, they're different in that way. But tonally, how different would you say this is from the show, just from a tonal perspective? Not that different. Right. I mean, uh, I'd say it's probably more offensive mm-hmm. on, on several grounds, but... Again, it's not to say the show won't get there, you know, but they have to kind of lay some groundwork before they start blaspheming all over the place, I guess. Yeah, this is more religiously offensive, and it's Mm -hmm. more aggressive. Yeah. You know, um, I wouldn't say that it's more graphic. It might be a little more graphic, but the show... It's pretty graphic. It's pretty graphic, and you get a lot more of that. You get people's faces blown off and uh, arms cut off and, you know, broken limbs and stuff in here. So I think tonally they're they're pretty similar. I'm pretty impressed with the show's ability to take what we have here and give a completely different medium to it. Like it's mm. it's completely changed from the medium, but still manages to keep the tone. So for people that yeah. have seen the show, they get the same tone, but just a different medium's take on it. And again, like I think it would be a mistake to try to 
you know, totally just copy the comic and make a show out of it. Like, it, it would have been terrible. It wouldn't work. This yeah. only works in comic form, I think. Sure. It reminds me in some ways of some of the, the show or the movies that kind of failed in the 90s. A lot of stuff with like Christopher Walken and people like yeah. that, like Prophecy. And mm-hmm. uh, it's got a lot of f- that feel of a lot of those things from the 90s that were about angels and hell and uh, the war of, you know, the afterworld or whatever. Uh, and all those are cheesy, so right. it, it just doesn't work in a in a live action format. But it does work here. So if, I'm actually a fan of some of that '90s stuff. Like I really like the prophecy in those movies. And so reading this, it felt like a really good version of that stuff. You know, so mm-hmm. I thought that was cool. So yeah, let's talk about now those differences, the things that are spoilers, mm-hmm. right? That if you've not read the comic don't watch unless you want to be spoiled but you know let's let's review the comic a little bit and talk about what we thought of it sure so i really liked this saint of assassins character yes they i did, did too a really good job just making this like cold like 100 percent sociopath fucking murderer dude and mm-hmm. just little details that they add in about how like his guns are like out of some museum they look like old pieces of shit but he makes like every shot he even attempts and Mm -hmm. yeah just looks at you like you're already dead Mm -hmm. i i think the characterizations in this are really strong and that's why this has gotten the reputation it has because they're not just cliche characters we have the cliche characters sprinkled in Mm -hmm. but then they're surrounded with more rounded, interesting characters. Well, even the cliche ones. I mean, you have like the uh, the piece of shit redneck cop sheriff, whatever from the town. Um, who you just take at surface level, and it's like, okay, that's what he is, you know. But then we learn like this extra shit about him and his son and stuff like that, and it just really like, you know, rounds him out mm-hmm. as a character. And right. It's, you just care like that. It's taken to making sure that everybody in this has their own story, their own personality, their own motivations for being the people mm-hmm. that they are mm-hmm. that I think really sets it apart from like the norm. Yeah, I, I agree as well. And there's a lot of those examples or like later on we have the detective from New York mm-hmm. who's very aggressive type A personality uh, and we get the reveal with him that, that shows the other side of, of who he is and maybe why he you know, overcompensates in the way he does. Right. I uh, love his sidekick too, by the yeah, way. Yeah, he's got this great bumbling sidekick who isn't entirely bumbling. Right. He's, but he would probably be dead if not for his partner. Yeah. Like a million times over. Right, right. Uh, he's a lot of fun. And, it, and uh, they even do some fun stuff at the end where they tell, like, what happened to him later that's pretty funny. But all of the characters in this are so, like you said, they're just so rounded out and interesting. And they all have a voice as well which really helps. And I I think maybe the thing with Garth Ennis that sets him apart and gives him his own voice is that he just makes everybody seem like a different kind of dick. Yeah. Like everybody's kind of an asshole, but But in a different way, in their own ways. There's no like nice people that you just genuinely think are good. Like every single person you encounter has their own shitty aspect that is highlighted throughout, right? It's, yeah. It's yeah. almost like it's a laser, laser focus of like the worst things about everybody you meet. Least of all, Cassidy. Uh, Cassidy is like a huge asshole in this, and you really don't start to feel for him really until he gets his feelings hurt at one point. Mm-hmm. And then you're just like, oh man, you know, but he's all right, you know, and then you, know, you start to really come around like once he's like the victim of, of some shit for once. Yeah, he's much less sympathetic, I think, in this than they make him out to be in the show. Yeah. You know, he uh, he just comes off as a straight asshole. And also, for anybody that, uh, like me, is a huge fan of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Spike is very clearly Cassidy. Like, there's no question, Joss Whedon, Red Preacher, loved Cassidy and decided he wanted him in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. There's, It's for sure, I guarantee it. Yeah. It's practically the same character, which is fantastic. Yeah. Cause Interesting. Because that's most Buffy, most people that watch Buffy, he's one of their favorite characters for the exact same reason as Cassidy. Because he's just this borderline prick that just, just has enough humanity in him 
uh, in enough emotional aspects to make you go, okay, I get yeah. it. I see why he's like he is, you know. Uh, he doesn't always have good intentions. Right. Right, but he owns up to it, I guess, mm-hmm. you know, and he's like, well, that's just the way I am. Like, deal with it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And he ends up saving him a couple times, you know, which is nice. But yeah, generally, he's just a total prick and like just doesn't give a shit. It's kind of awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Great. Great character. Um, is there anything in this that you didn't like? No. Me neither. I tried to read this maybe a decade ago. Uh, I didn't like it. I read uh, the first like issue and a half and quit. Uh, something about the storytelling at the time just was not clicking for me. Hmm. Uh, I don't know if it was the the setting, maybe the Texas setting with a preacher and uh, all the religious overtones, just I wasn't ready or comfortable for it at the time. Sure. Uh, being kind of rebellious 20s, you know, I don't want to follow a guy who's pro-religious, like right. leading a flock and not sarcastically, like seriously believes the stuff. Maybe that's what it was, but I didn't enjoy it at the time. So I was a little iffy about coming back into it and reading it again. I loved it this time. There was no complaints at all. So let's talk about Steve Dillon's art because we've, we've had our issues with Steve Dillon in the past. Yeah. Uh, Scarlet Witch, we dropped Scarlet Witch. When Steve Dillon got put Based on Steve Dillon. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, it was already on the chopping block, but Steve Dillon showed up and we're like, yeah, that's it. That's just too far. We can't handle Steve Dillon. Which given, uh, it was, I think the prior month we had decided to keep it like based on the artwork because it was just so like, I mean, it was like a book of paintings or something like that. So then to put like a regular feeling comic artist on this, which is how I would describe this. Mm -hmm. It's like a regular feeling comic of its time. Yeah, it was just a total deal breaker for that. But I think this being a book with such substance as compared to Scarlet Witch, uh, I don't think it really detracts nearly as much. No, I enjoy it. I think he works really well for this. Um, I really liked Steve Dillon on Punisher Max as well, and for the exact same reasons. He's good at these aggressive, gratuitously violent works like this. He, yeah. He works well for this thing where most people are scowling most of the time and angry. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he's not so good at like happy or funny or even just malaise. Like, yeah. His best work is always very aggressive, angry people, and that's what we get through most of this. Yeah, so. that's, that's this book in a nutshell. So. Angry, aggressive people. And otherwise, I agree, it's pretty straightforward. The paneling is almost always just a normal paneling scheme. Mm-hmm. Uh, artistically, it just looks like your average comic book, aside from gritty and angry. Uh, nothing yeah. too exciting to talk about artistically, is there? No, not really. I mean, there's, again, there's pretty gruesome scenes and whatnot, but... Uh... And just decided that was his thing, so. Right. Well, I guess that pretty much wraps it up then. Uh, if you like the show, you probably like the comic, uh, but don't expect the same story, right? Because it's different. You'll get some stuff spoiled really bad. Yeah. Uh, but I think it makes it better. I don't yeah. think it's that interesting of a mystery, to be honest. No, not really. I mean, uh, I read this before I even, like, started watching the show, and, like, I don't feel like... I wish I'd watched the show first or anything like that. You know, I don't feel like anything was really spoiled for me. You know, I mean, maybe that's just, again, being the comic reader and being prepared for shit that most people would be like, okay, what the fuck, that's a little bit far out. And, you know, for us, it's just kind of, okay. Yeah, for me, I feel like the spoilage aspects of it improve the show because the mystery is not that interesting. It's once you know what's going on, it's more interesting knowing. I think think. so too. I think it makes Jesse Custer a more interesting character, which is why they did it this way. In the comic, he's like, here's the central conceit. Like the character has this thing, now he has to wrestle with it. Whereas in the show, that thing is almost just a back burner extra thing. Right? So like Well it's coming a little bit more a little bit slowly. But just getting that out of the way and just knowing I think is better. I think it makes the show better and more interesting to see what's behind that door and mm-hmm. then see how that's affecting him and, and who he is with knowing that that's there. Yeah. You have almost like this third person narrative where you get to see him discover things that you already know. And, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I would definitely, cool. I would definitely recommend the comic to anybody watching the show. Yeah, just read it now. Yeah, it's not going to hurt anything. It'll make it better. Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr. Mm-hmm. Podcast. Podcast. YouTube. All the places where we are. Like, subscribe. Bye. Bye now.